What's going on team? Proof here. And today I got the big one for you guys. Uh, it was the big but reveal, the hype reveal from great. the Bushy stream that took place on Tuesday. And it's Ryzen's grade three new form. And I think it's really good. It's really hype. And I'm gonna go through it and hope you guys can see where I'm coming from with what I'm about to say. But strap in. Get some popcorn, get some chips, get, some, get a drink, because I think this one's going to go on for a good little bit. And his name is Giant Star Rising Great Star. And he has charge, so that's really good. And he says, Counter Blast 1, choose a card from your hand and put it into the soul. When this unit is placed on Vanguard or Rear Guard, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to one grade 2 or less card with the charge ability. Call to an open rear guard circle, shuffle your deck, and if this unit is charging, this unit gets plus 3,000 power to the end of turn. And on top of that, he has auto vanguard circle, GB2. At the end of each turn, if the number of your rear guards is two or less, choose one of your rear guards and you may put it into your soul if you do draw a card. So there's a lot to unpack here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through his non-charge skills, his first one, and then I'm gonna go through the second one after that and give my thoughts and opinions on it. So for his first skill, the first thing I'm sure everybody noticed is that he doesn't have a stride skill anymore. And what they effectively did was that they took his old GB2 skill and converted it into an on-place or an on-ride skill, which to me is a really fair trade-off because it gives them a little more utility and because we have a lot of ways to call out charge units during the battle phase that we can get around to utilizing it more often as opposed to once during the turn during the stride during uh, the battle the bleh, <laughs> during the battle phase and as the deck has evolved over time we kind of started getting away from using rising rising nova's stride skill which if you aren't familiar it's uh, counter blast one put a card from your hand into the soul when your vanguard attacks you may pay the cost and if you do you search your deck for a card call it to an open rear guard circle and it gets plus five to the end of turn as the deck has shifted to the crazy eight deck we got away from using his stride skill for that purpose outside of your big combo turns so we always had like the extra counter blast lingering about and we use him for his name more so because of his support, especially with Frog Raider. And that's why I'm not too heartbroken over the fact that he, that Great Star here doesn't have a true stride ability as opposed to having now a more flexible, uh, more flexible ability to be able to use it over the course of the turn when you want to because of the ways we can call units out of the deck or from our hand because of Hive Maker. And he's effectively a charged version of Misery, except you trade in the plus five power for not needing to have her be boot or not needing for him to be boosted, which to me is a really very fair trade off because Misery, as time has gone on, we've gotten away from her because she didn't have charge. And we wanted to try to pack the deck with a lot of charge units for Miracle Ace and for Hellheart 8 with uh, Frog Raider because you don't want to run out of charge units during your big combo turn. And Misery's role in the deck dwindled as we got more and more into, or more, as we got further away from Miracle Ace, Misery's role went down because we just didn't need her as much anymore because we had alternative winning options, especially when Hellheart 8 came out. Her role pretty much depleted completely away. But with Great Star here, we feel the role of a misery type skill of calling alternatively through another means while at the same time feeding our charge base for Miracle Ace, which makes Miracle Ace better because when you combine, when you combine Great Star with other cards, it becomes much more of a viable option. Another thing I noticed is that he gets that plus 3000 power. So he's while charging, he's 14,000, which with any 7K booster makes him a perfect 21K column. So your Frog Raiders, your Elizas, your Charging Devil Watches, uh, things like that. 
And that's really strong just because if we can pack power, most power that we want to stack is in increments of five and 10, like triggers or Miracle Ace boosts or Hell Heart 8 boosts. He, he can keep progressively hitting perfect numbers with those 7K boosters, which makes it really nice that he gets that extra little bonus on top of that just to put more pressure on the opponent. Even though he doesn't have his own stride skill, he does have synergy with uh, OG Rising Nova's GB2 ability, which is what, as I mentioned before, is pretty much the exact same as his on play skill or on ride on play skill minus the CB1. So what you would do is if you happen to not be not able to stride that turn, you attack with Ryzen, Ryzen Nova, use his GB2 to put a card from your hand into the soul. You search out Great Star, and then when you place Great Star down, you use his ability to counter blast one, put a card in again, call out something like Mayhem Tiger or something like that, just so you now filled out your ranks to have three attacks that turn as opposed to just having one attack or two attacks that turn, which might be enough if you're if both you and your opponent are on your last gasp, just to be able to get in there with that last point of damage to win the game. And it does have good synergy, but not or different from Misery. With Misery, you could call her out and then you could do your twin drive. With Great Star here, you don't have that luxury, so you need to make sure you have enough cards in hand to fulfill the ability twice as the Vanguard is attacking. And the last piece that I noticed for his first skill is that it can only call grade two or less charging rear guard or rear guards with the charge ability, which means unfortunately we can't call out our our favorite amphibian frog raider with him because frog raider doesn't have the charge ability. He just has great synergy with charge units. So you have to keep that in mind for your big combo turns. If you want, if you if you're in need of frog raider, you need to find a way to get it out, assuming that um he's on your vanguard circle and not rising nova himself so that'll do it for his first skill as just a general overview so now i'm going to talk about a little bit more about how he fills the role in uh, the context of a couple of the different decks so or for a couple of the other strides <laughs> so for miracle ace he has great synergy with frog raider because or a great center for Frog Raider to build up soul for Miracle Ace because Miracle Ace's GB3 skill needs two soul blasts to use uh, for each of, each of his uses. So you can effectively gain a lot of soul just by combining Great Star with Double Watch because you get one soul off of Great Star's uh, being called up to rear guard skill. And then you call out Double Watch and you get another soul off of that. And if you have multiple great stars in your hand, you can repeat that chain because great star uses one counter blast and then double watch and gets it back for you immediately. So if you have a big enough hand, enough non-charge units, you can keep adding two. So you pretty much made Miracle Ace's uh, GB3 skill free because you add two, subtract two to call out a great star add to subtract to call out another great star if you have a lot of them in your hand which is really cool when you think about it just just to get that combo turn going and just be able to pummel your opponent down with a uh, miracle ace's skill again if they can't interrupt it that is and for every great star that you call during miracle ace it's another 5,000 power onto your frog raider just because you're going to call the other unit out charging then it does his, it does their thing and then they go back to the deck and then another part of Miracle Ace's act skill is to add plus 5,000 power as the unit returns back to the deck so you get you double dip on the 5,000 power as the unit returns back to the deck and then when Great Star himself returns back to the deck through charging himself and along with Frog Raider, not Frog Raider, along with Double Watch, he has incredible synergy with Cunning Brain, which I featured in a couple of Recruit Report videos ago. Because if you call out Great Star, use his skill to call out Cunning Brain, you attack with Cunning Brain, Cunning turns or Brain returns back to the deck, his skill activates, and if you bind and then have at least one other Cunning Brain in your bind zone after his bind skill goes off, 
you can pass an additional 10,000 power to your frog raider, which makes, which is, you've accelerated your miracle ace count by two calls there. So you don't need to call, or you can ideally reduce the a number of units you need to finish your opponent off before you run out of cards or charge units in your hand. And if you, again, have multiple great stars in your hand, you can do it again as long as you see counter blast permitted and then put more power on your frog raider and just accelerate that clock even more if you need to go into miracle lace as opposed to trying to get into hellheart eight or to picaro or something like that and to me he as i mentioned before be since he's like a charge misery he put short up a lot of the issues that we had with our charge base just by solidifying two roles at once of being a a battle phase call that we can call out pretty effectively while at the same time adding more to our charge base <laughs> and being able to call out during the battle phase that way gives us a, an additional out to denial griffin and likely mp dragon as well because with denial we can force them to, to need more than one denial griffin to stop our miracle ace turn and if they have it they have it then if they don't then we could just keep comboing off on them and then maybe if they don't have the advance guard or something like that just keep the process going until the wheels fall off for them so in the context of miracle ace it he's a really big proponent for him and he might well he not might he definitely added a whole lot of value to having Miracle Ace in your stride deck again, just because it added more consistency to him being able to finish. And as we get more into more, as we get more into a Battle Sister like meta with uh, Iki Kashima being out there, we need to be able to effectively utilize Miracle Ace. And Great Star does a, a really big role in making him much, of, much more viable. So in the terms of Hellheart 8, similar to Miracle Ace, he aids us in being able to get around those troublesome G-Guards like Denial Griffin and Impede Dragon, just because we can, when we call them out from our deck, we can use his skill to call something else out. So now they have two, two units that they need to deal with at the same time, which is hard for them to do, except for the case of Impede Dragon sometimes. And I remember before when I did the playing around video for MP Dragon. I talked about um, how we couldn't play around or at the time I couldn't think of a way to play around sweep command with MP Dragon. And even though I haven't really fully thought it out yet, I think having Great Star as an option pretty much put that to rest for us because we might be able to play around it now with having that battle phase call to call out two units at once as opposed to just nickel and diamond calling out one thing at a time. So I'm sure somebody might be able to help me out with that, but I haven't fully thought it out because I've been trying to put together the notes here and ton of notes, guys, <laughs> copious amounts of notes. If you haven't been able to tell already, I'm, I'm sure like I'm like 16 minutes in already. Along with Hellheart and similar to Miracle Ace, just on a greater scale, it allows for more abuse of cunning brain just because we, we're not reliant on having great stars in our hand, we can call them out freely from our deck. And if we change together multiple great stars with cunnings at the same time, we can just put crazy power on our frog raider and we can likely hit over 100,000 power just off of a couple sequences of those two coming together, which is really incredible and really insane when you think about it. And believe it or not, Great Star also has some applications with the Bad End deck. I want to preface this by saying you can't combine Great Star with the Double Break Right because in order to fulfill the Double Break Right, you need to have a full board and Great Star can only call if you don't have a full board because he calls to open Rear Guard Circle. However, you are able to call out a Great Star off of a good end to his own circle and you can use great stars skill to call out another charge unit maybe an eliza so that way you can bind and recall that same great star 
So you just, you can burn through your counter blast at once and put a lot of pressure on your opponent with the extra 10,000 power coming from, from uh, your attacks that turn. Or maybe you can call out a double watch to put to the other side if you already have an Eliza behind your Great Star. So that way you can get the counter blast back, attack with the charge and Great Star, bind it with Eliza, call it back out, call out another Eliza or double watch again just to repeat the process or something like that. It has good synergy with other classes in our clan or other deck types in our clan. Unfortunately, it doesn't gel with Dudley just because Dudley is very selective, I guess you could say. Well, I forget, I don't know the right word to use, but the, a lot of their stuff wants to have Dudley in it to, to work. And you can't effectively use Great Star's ability to his max potential in a Dudley deck. So unfortunately that, that's a no-go there at the current moment. And so now we go on to his second skill, <laughs> which is his GB2 at the end of the at the end of each turn. So not just your turn, at the end of each turn, you can absorb one of your rear guards and draw a card. So when you combine his GB2 with Agrius, the stride that I featured in the previous recruitment report, and Prompt Cheetah, which is one of the other previous recruitment reports, you can effectively get nice attacks off, nice number of attacks off with nice power, and then you can Soul Blast a card to keep Cheetah around, and then you can absorb Cheetah and draw a card. So that's really good. <laughs> like those Agrius and Grace are together, pretty much are gonna put Prompt Cheetah on the map. Provided that nothing better comes along in the, the next reveals that we have coming out to replace Cheetah. But being able to attack with Cheetah for 21k with a 7k booster, maybe once or twice or maybe three times if you have multiple Cheetahs out. And then you can keep a Cheetah around to then recoup a card into your hand. And then you drew another card with Agrius along the way. You put you reduce a lot of shield on your opponent's side while you didn't reduce any on your side. Cause I remember I did the math earlier today and assuming you start with like seven cards in your hand, you can end your turn by, you can end your turn with that same number of cards or potentially add on another one with Rising Great Stars GB2 skill just by using Cheetah, by utilizing Cheetah to its potential there. So, it's really good, it's really strong for that capacity. And you can think of it as like a, a tactical filter because you know how Gary Gannon would be like, if it hits, you can discard a card and draw a card. You can think of it as putting a card into your soul and drawing a card. So you kind of filter out the non-charge units for your charge units. If you're thinking about going into Miracle Ace, you can feed your soul for Miracle Ace, which in, helps your end game out. You can put more soul in for Mayhem Tiger or any other would-be card in the future that needs to utilize the, that soul that we built up. And you can dig for more heals, you can dig for more PGs, you can dig for more 10K shields. It does a whole lot all at one time and it seems really simple. And the biggest thing about his GB2, which I don't know how many people thought about it, but it helps us in the Link Joker matchup because the way the end phase works, you destride and then you unflip before the end phase is over. So I don't I don't have the word in in on hand on me, but you'll destride and you'll unlock and then before the end phase ends, you can absorb the card that unlocks and draw, which frees up the spot for the Link Joker matchup so they can't relock it again. And if you're against Chaos, they're, that puts them in a predicament to where they want to lock down both our front rows so we can't use one of them. But if they don't blow it up with one of their Chaos uh, Grade threes, that gives us the ability to draw a card off of it. So either way, we net out by having that rear guard circle open against their will, <laughs> which is good for us. Unfortunately, it doesn't work against um, 
Glendios because he straight up Omega locks it. So we have to wait a turn and they can keep Omega locking it. It helps against Messiahs to a degree for similar reasons because we can absorb and then get it get out the way for later. But just the way that it works in conjunction by helping us get around a generally troublesome matchup while still letting us be aggressive up to that point is really good for us. And that helped me, That help, all this together helps solidify it in my brain that I'm definitely, which is I'm sure people want to know what my grade three lineup is going to be, is that going into my testing, I'm going to play four great star straight up just because of how good I think he is. Uh, two, Ryzen Nova, just because we still need to have Ryzen Nova around for the Miracle Ace turn because we can't get the party started unless we already have another great star in our hand. So under the pretense that we don't have great star, we need to have Ryzen Nova. And Ryzen Nova has the ability to get Frog Raider for us if we're lacking it, which is the big reason why we need him. So that's why I want to play two because I don't want to run into the position where my first damage check is my one lone Ryzen Nova. And now I'm completely shut off from being able to use Miracle Ace by and large for the rest of the game. You don't want to put yourself in that position where your deck building choice pretty much screwed you out, screwed you up in the end. And I fill out the rest of the grade threes with two Hive Maker. Just because Hive Maker's ability to be able to call out cards from our hand really combos well with Hellheart 8 and it combos well with Rising Great Star on play scale for those instances. So you definitely want to keep it around for that. So I hope that explains it. <laughs> this went on just as long as I thought it would. Uh, I believe I covered everything that I had in mind, but if I didn't, comment down below and I or somebody else will be able to help you out. But I hope you enjoy. This was definitely the hypest card for the latest reveals. I'm definitely pleased with it. I know people weren't excited about it at first, but the more you think about it, the better it gets. And I really like cards like that that aren't like in your face really good but it's like nuanced to where you need to think about it more it's like okay it does that okay it does this okay it does that and then this is like the light bulbs go off and you see all these different things that can take place with it so i hope you enjoy hope you enjoyed the other recruit reports i got another one on the way as well uh yeah and until next time peace be easy